Fellowship. Um, I'm working on just at the very beginning of a, of, a, of a new project I want to develop on popular ideas about genetics in, in America. Um, and it's, I mean, it relates to science in the sense that it's about genetics, and, you know, which is a big topic now. A lot of research, a lot of investment in it, a lot of hope around it, and, um, and, and fear, I would say, too. And, um, and I think that we social scientists need to, to look from our angle at what's going on here. My general view is that Americans um, put a lot of faith in genetic explanations, and, and there's a certain, I would say, fatalism um, regarding illness and our and how we take care of ourselves because of, because of the popular genetic thinking. Um, and this popular thinking isn't just, I would say, popular just in the world of, of, of the everyday person, but it is also affects the world of science um, at, at sort of a general level. So when thereby. Um, practitioners, therapists, doctors who don't specialize in genetics, I think are also taking on this popular idea that our genes explain everything. Uh, even, even though a lot of genetic research projects that have uh, had heavy capital investments have, have failed to come up with much of anything in terms of uh, genetic markers for illness, um, that doesn't seem to stop the popular idea. Examples from other people's work uh, include, uh, for example, uh, Kaya Finkler wrote a book called Experiencing the New Genetics. In that book, she also looks at people who've uh, adopted uh, children in the U.S. who have searched for their adoptive, for their birth parents, for their biological parents. Um, o overall, the sense I get from that book and from adopted kids I know, I would say that the genetic ideology in the U.S. limits them. I think they, they think that their true nature is based on some, uh, some uh, genetic biological essence. And what we see in Kai Finkler's book that interviews adoptees is that, to generalize, I would say that their their essence isn't in their biology. When they when they meet their birth parents, it's a strange disconnect because it's really class difference um, that that they're experiencing um, that 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 surprises them. That they um, and they anticipate an almost spiritual connection due to shared DNA. We um, you learn from this book that we made DNA as something almost spiritual. In this country, we'll talk about how they're going to feel the special, like vibe, literally like a vibration or some kind of interior glow when they see their their biologically related parents for the first time. Um, and um, I, I believe this sort of limits the development of the fulfillment of people's cells. This genetic determinism. Um, I feel like it's a burden. Um, I think it even limits how adopted kids do in life in school, for example, because of their uh, of their view of. of who their what their real identity is, and that their potential for achievement is um, is limited in their minds by their biology. And this has a long history in this country. You know, if you if you look cross culturally, we're very unique. If you go to even to Europe, Francophone Europe, but non Anglophone Europe, uh, you don't find as much genetic determinism in, in the popular culture. And and, um, and this may have something to do with the history of race and racism in the U.S. If you look at IQ testing that started in France and Belgium, it it, it, it was supposed to measure um, you know, where you've gotten in terms of intelligence that had been given to you by your work in your schooling. Um, when this test got translated into English, it suddenly became a test of an inherent ability that we were some, somehow born with, which is a, a new perspective on IQ. And one of the people behind this new perspective was Lewis Terman, a psychologist who was at Stanford. And um, I actually went to Terman Junior High School in California. and. and just recently, I've discovered that the term and that it was named after was was the guy who developed the IQ test in the in the U.S. And the reason he had developed it and what he used it for most often was to to sort of establish who has a, who has a lesser IQ and who has a greater one. Yet he, he anticipated that um, racial minorities would have lower IQs, and he was going to use this test to show us as a society that we need to invest in the people with the strongest IQs, the basically the white kids and not spend a lot of money trying to educate inferior races that weren't going to do as well. Um, and he made, you know, IQ became something, became something inherent and biological. And so I'm trying to look for whether there's links, you know, in these areas. Do, is our biological determinism, our genetic determinism, our, in our culture, does it somehow relate to our history of, of race and racism? Um, but this is what we've done throughout history, is we, we've always assumed that the reason for the problem is is in, inherent in the the biology, the ge genetic something in the intangible material core of the person, and we can't seem to come up with social explanations for these differences. Because I think we Americans think this is just what 
science has told us. This is how things are. We don't realize that we have a very unique re reading of science in, the, in this culture. Genes do things to us. They just don't do a lot of the things we think that they do.